It's perfectly simple. Why does my heart sink when you say that? The, the whole idea is ridiculous. We should get somebody in to do all this. We can't afford to. We have to live within our means. I don't know anybody who lives within their means. Most people wouldn't know their means well enough to say hello to. Look, <laughs> week one, task seven, clean bathroom wash basin, responsibility, red. Is all this leading up to something? You didn't clean the wash basin, did you? One, two. I beg your pardon. Sheer bloody-mindedness in a subordinate is almost impossible to deal with. You are not my subordinate. Well, stop ordering me around, then. We both now have important jobs that take us out of the house all day long. This is very true. We have therefore decided to divide the household task into two lots. One is the blue lot, the other is the red lot. You put it all very clearly. Well, I'm doing all the blue lots, aren't I? Yesterday, I had the washing and the ironing. The cooking was your responsibility. We ate. I was there. I remember. We ate an Indian takeaway from Mr. Rouse. You went rummaging in the bin for all the cardboard takeaway containers, didn't you? It's your own fault, you're disillusioned, not mine. Look, if you don't do the red tasks, who is going to? Morning. I don't believe it. It's true. Believe it. Believe it. We agreed that we would both share the household tasks. I have contracted out. I have engaged a subcontractor. And she's going to pay me in pound notes so as not to bother the VAT. <laughs> so if you'll just excuse me, I'll go and make myself perfect for the rest of the day. Just a minute. Now, what if I want to go and make myself perfect? I have equal rights in this household, you know. You should have started about three months ago. It's only going to take me two minutes. I would never have thought that you of all people, Louise, would have betrayed me like this. No, neither would I. Still, there you go. It just goes to show, doesn't it? <laughs> Where shall I start? Um, the, uh, plug hole in the bathroom wash basin's got all bunged up. What with? Hairs and gunge. Oh, I think I'll start down here. <laughs> well, who's going to clean the plug hole in the bathroom? Well, whose hairs are they? Well, what does that matter? It's a great responsibility. Look. Well, they'll probably go away by themselves. No, they will not. They will weld themselves into an impenetrable wadge and the, 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 the water won't run away. Why didn't you hook them out as soon as you first saw them? Because it's a red responsibility. I do the blue tasks. Look. Let's face it, you're just a little bit pedantic, aren't you? Well, you're supposed to be the cleaner, aren't you? Right. Where's the steel wall? <laughs> steel wall? You, you can't. You'll you take the top off our surfaces. Belinda, she wants to use steel wool on our surfaces. David, the time has come to choose. Either you can stay here and worry about steel wool and surfaces, or you can join the big wide world of business and worry about whether sitting at a desk all day will give you curvature of the spine. <laughs> right. Right? Right. To work. <laughs> Bye, Lou. Yeah. Bye, Lou. Bye. Only manager for a week. It's all very well for you. Can't have your expectations dashed from your lips. All my lips can expect Ned is to get chapped in winter. And of course, the occasional nuzzle from a close friend. Now don't start all that again. So I've got over Estelle finding that joke Valentine card. What joke Valentine card? That joke Valentine card you sent by a house covered in suggestive remarks. Don't pretend it wasn't you. It was you, wasn't it? Ned. Give over, of course it was me. I told you you shouldn't do things like that. I told you my wife's got no sense of humour. She threatened to make me sleep in the garage. <laughs> Sorry. I just couldn't resist the card with all the teddy bears on it. What teddy bears? The cards I'm talking about had a huge fat naked woman on it and it said in large red letters, do something to me, please. <laughs> I didn't send that. I've never said please to a man in my life. <laughs> Don't tell me there are two of you on the loose. What's the matter? I could have sworn I just saw Barrington Ricketts go past the window. 
Oh, I'd like to talk to you about the small business day later, if I may. Sure. Any particular time? Uh, Ned. Uh, before lunch, Ned's free. Fine. Um, I think he's just seen a ghost. No, it's just somebody who looked like him. Somebody who looked like who? You don't want to know. What are you doing here? <laughs> Good Lord. I wonder if I could have a word with Mr. Braithwaite. Just stay there. <laughs> the sexual harasser wants a word with you. <laughs> what the devil does he want? Maybe he wants to start his own small business. <laughs> Do-it-yourself torture chambers. <laughs> if you want a hand, give me a ring. Thank you very much, darling. What can I do for you, Mr. Ricketts? I think we're going to have to let bygones be bygones, David, if we're going to have any sort of business relationship. Business relationship? Can we have a word? You'd better come this way. It's like somebody walking over your grave, isn't it? You've got to admire his cheek, you really have. I don't see why. He's a lout. Always was, always will be. You used to practically throw yourself at his feet every time he came in. You are a fraud. I was just being polite. Politeness costs nothing. You should try it sometime. I have done. I didn't like it. Come on, you two. We've got more important things to do with our time than worry about him. Ned? Yes? Get me the list of small business starts for the next three months. Right. I thought you lived next door. I, any, um, any chance of a snort? Charles, this isn't my house. I can't go giving people's gin away. No, no, Lucinda wouldn't mind. I don't know where they keep it. Oh, oh, this sounds like gin. <laughs> but at least it'll do until we find the proper stuff. <laughs> oh, um, are you having one? No, I am not. Oh, can't say the Queen. Oh. Charles, you are awful. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but at my age, you're stuck with it. <laughs> at least one might as well enjoy oneself while one's still capable. What, what, what do you think? Not just at the moment, thank you, Charles. No, 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 maybe all right. Of course, we'd have to draw the curtains, which may cause unnecessary comment. <laughs> Charles? Hmm? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Where were we? Well, so far you've knocked on the door, drunk about half a pint of gin, and propositioned me for the sixth time this week. Oh, my stamina must be going. I'm normally up to ten by now. Charles. Yes, my dear. Why are you here? Letter. Oh, who from? Bean, Bean, Bean Godfrey. <laughs> Ex-husband, Shifters. Have they made an offer? Lump sum, no less. Oh, how much? <gasps> <laughs> Can't save the Queen. <laughs> what are they going to do with all this lovely money? Well, to be perfectly frank, Mr. Ricketts, I don't like you and I never have. And the less time I spend talking to you, the happier my day will be. That was a bit blunt. Well, bluntness is one of the things I am good at. Punching people who make passes on my wife is another. <laughs> I admit I was incautious enough to admire your wife. Come on, don't pretend you were paying her a compliment. <laughs> I apologise. And I withdrew with as much dignity as I could muster under the circumstances. I also apologise to you, sincerely. Is that why you've come here today, to apologise? Not exactly, no. Well, get on with it, will you? I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. <laughs> good. What do you mean, good? I have a proposition to make. And I would like you to examine it with care. Anything I get from you, Mr. Ricketts, I will examine with extreme care. I may even send out for a Geiger counter. <laughs> so, what else is in the diary? You've got a dinner date with some Americans. When? Uh, tonight. Don't look at me like that. It wasn't my idea. But whose idea was it? What? <laughs> She's found out. Oh, found out about what? It, it's not that payroll thing, was it? No, I can explain about the payroll thing. No, no, no. no, it, no, was, no it wasn't no. my fault. She's no. found out about dinner tonight. Oh. Let me see. <clears throat> I mean, why am I having dinner with them? When did all this happen? It happened when you were away, when I was manager of the bank. And they may want to open a new account here. Well, is it a small business start? Could be. What do you mean it could be? What's their projected turnover? More than a million pounds a year in the first year. <sighs> well, I suppose I'd better see them. 
anyway, women are natural hostesses. Yeah, that's true, yes, exactly. And Ned can't go because it's a Stell's Bridge night tonight and he's got to hand around the peanuts. <laughs> we don't have peanuts anymore, we have pistachios. <laughs> oh, very yuppie. Yes, except that people keep throwing the shells into the fire. What's wrong with that? It's a gas effect fire with imitation logs. <laughs> Well, at least Estelle can't blame you for that. <laughs> well, I bet she says that if I was more successful, we'd live out in the country and have a real log fire and it wouldn't matter. Give us some information on these American dinner people tonight. Bye, Belinda. Bye, Jessica. That man has got more neck than a herd of giraffes. <laughs> it's your own fault. You shouldn't have encouraged him. I, I, I did not encourage him. You went to Brighton with him. Mm, you can't argue with that. Look, just get on with some work, you two, or I will give you both a final warning. I suppose one of you has booked a table for tonight. Um, uh, not exactly. I don't believe it. Well, I mean, we didn't know you'd go, did we? No, that's true, we didn't. Ah, we couldn't presume you'd go, could we? No. Do you know, I think I preferred it when you two hated each other. <laughs> Book a table. Book a table. Uh, can you spare a minute? I'd spare a decade if it'll get me away from these two. Yes. I only need a minute. Hey, <laughs> if it's intimate, you've got to go in the smaller uh, interview room. Jessica, <laughs> it's only a joke. So what did Ratface Ricketts want? That's what I came to tell you. He wanted to see me about his new job. How can you even speak to him? That's what I'm paid to do. So what's she going to be doing? Well, I'll give you details later, but don't worry about it. I took care of it. Look, you should at least tell me what happened. I am not only your wife and your bank manager, I also control the finance of your small business bureau. Well, don't get all power mad again. Makes your forehead go all spotty. <laughs> Mrs. Carr, for you. I'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Hello, Louise. Can I, can I come and see you? I've just come into a lot of money. Ah, uh, fine. When? When did I come into the money? <laughs> About half an hour ago. I, I, I put it in the client's account. About half an hour ago. No, Louise, when do you want to come and see me? Uh, well, uh, early afternoon. Right. Uh, and your washer's broken. What? It just went bang and then stopped. And uh, I've broken some china. Ow. With the hoover when Charles came in. Oh, and you're going to need some more gin. <laughs> and by the way, I don't want to be your cleaner anymore. I've got some money now and cleaning's menial. You can just pay me up till 11 o'clock. It's half past eleven now. Well, I did break a few things. You can have half an hour for nothing. See you later. I can hardly wait, Louise. Bye. You don't want a job cleaning on Saturday mornings, do you? No, I've got one. The mess in my flat reaches your waist by Saturday. <laughs> Why? Louise has come into some money and resigned. Look here, Louise. Has a divorce settlement come through? Well, it looks like it. Hmm. I wouldn't mind getting married for a bit, if it means I could get a good divorce settlement. Here are the papers for those foreigners. He's lovely, isn't he? All English and riddled with prejudices. <laughs> I know. What? I'll marry Ned next time. <laughs> that way it won't matter when we get divorced. I'd have to get divorced from Estelle before I could marry you, and she wouldn't leave me enough for a flea to live on, let alone you. <laughs> I've seen you eat, remember? <laughs> We could go on a diet. We could manage. He'd marry me if he could, wouldn't you? I might. At least we get over all the nasty surprises first, not like last time. <laughs> well, that's done it. Let one word of this reach aerobics and Estelle will be down here with blood in her eye. <laughs> Jessica. What? You're not thinking about what I think you are thinking about. You get half each in a divorce settlement, don't you? It would almost be worth it. I bet he's a tiger in bed. <laughs> you shouldn't laugh at me when I'm talking to a customer. It undermines the authority of the bank. Ned, we weren't laughing at you. Yes, we were. <laughs> anyway i mean they say if you can laugh at someone you're halfway to falling in love with them april the first was last week i think it's more to do with st valentine's day if the truth be told i'm warning you estelle won't stand for it well if you were serious you'd be in with a chance hmm i said if you were serious i know i've heard you <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Hey, come in. Well, we're handling about ten new starts a week at the moment. Sit down. 
Fine, I'll send you the information. Right. Well, thanks for calling. Bye. Well, how very nice to see you. Thank you. This is nice. Yeah. Well, it's a bit better than the town hall, isn't it? <laughs> Does the door lock? <laughs> what? I just wondered if the door locked. Um, yes, why? Oh, I was just wondering. <laughs> Sorry? Well, I mean, with all these confidential papers lying around, I suppose it would have to lock, wouldn't it? <laughs> Is my clock that easy to wind? Pretty easy. <laughs> but I haven't actually come to wind your clock. Ah. Why have you come then? Well, I was directed here, as a matter of fact. Really? Hmm. I'm thinking of leaving the council and becoming a small business. Oh. Don't forget you're seeing Louise in half an hour. Hmm? Oh, right. Um, well, what time did you book the table for tonight? Oh, shoot. Oh, I, I couldn't book anywhere. Everywhere was booked up. I, there's a conference meeting somewhere and I've left it too late. I what am I going to do with these Americans? Well, maybe you could get them to sample your wonderful British home cookery. <laughs> or get David to help out. So, the uh, Bureau seems to be taking off then, does it? Well, I'm a fully-fledged business, and now you know. I don't do any housework, I don't do any ironing, I don't even do any... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. Um, David, I wonder if you could be a real angel tonight. Cooked dinner for how many? <laughs> oh, I can't. Why not? Um, I have a business meeting. I'm seeing a client. Awfully sorry. got a business meeting. I'm going to have to do it all by myself. It's that mad woman and her deranged lawyer. You have a real empathy with customers, don't you, Ned? <laughs> Not particularly. You can just see trouble coming a mile off. Hello, Lucinda. Hi. Uh, you're a bit early. Well, we've just come to tell you we're not coming to see you. Pardon? No, we're, we're going to see David instead. We're going to start a small business. What kind of small business? We're going to do catering in people's houses. We're really excited, aren't we, Charles? Very excited, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you've sorted everything out, why don't you sit down with Mr. Race and, uh, you know, talk about finance? Oh, yes. He handled my dicky hip nicely. Mm. Thank you, Lucinda. Bye. Right. Well, it's very nice to see you again. If you have any problems, just give me a ring. Thank you, David. Okay. I will. Bye. David. Oh, hello, Teresa. Hello, Louise. I'll um, catch up with you later. Lovely. Bye. What are you doing with Teresa? She's not a small business. I don't think it's fair. I thought you said you weren't having an affair with her. Don't be ridiculous, Louise. Uh, come in, Charles. Oh, we're in, Meredith. We're in. <laughs> right, so take a seat. Now, what can I do for you? Well, we want to start a small business that does catering, you know, in people's houses. Charles is going to be the expert on fine wines. <laughs> what are you a... laughing at? You're going to go to people's, <laughs> to people's houses and they're going to pay you to cook for them, are they? <laughs> yes. And uh, Charles is going to be the wine waiter. <laughs> yes, I, I shall stand at the door and offer people drinks when they arrive. Ah. Uh, Sherry no. or pink gin? The one with the Angora bitters in it. No, I think you'll find it's Angostura bitters, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Angora bitters. Like the rabbits. They've got pink eyes. <laughs> but I'll have pink eyes in a minute if you don't pay attention, Louise. Now, you can't go into business without the proper grounding. You go bankrupt in two months. Are you putting any money into this, Charles? Not money as such, dear boy, no. Just, just years of expertise. <laughs> Charles, um, you are a very good lawyer with uh, a liking for pink gin and pretty ladies, but uh, they're not the proper credentials for being the next business tycoon, are they? Will you stop making faces when I'm talking, Louise? <laughs> Thank you. Now, who is going to be the senior partner? Uh, I am. Right, well, we'll have to sort that one out. Uh, now, what about cash flow? Well, I've got cash. Why do I have to worry about cash flow? Right, right. Mm. Well, if you don't worry about cash flow, Louise, all your cash will flow out, won't it? You're such a downer, David. They should have got someone cheerful to run this advice bureau, not someone who keeps talking about losing money. You know, I really don't think you're in the right job. Honestly, I don't. Come on, Charles. 
He's just jealous because we're going to be a success and he's not. <laughs> Mr. Ball. Very late. How are you? Fine, fine. Can I come through? Uh, Jessica, a cup of coffee for Mr. Ball. Uh, this is Ned Race, the assistant manager. Ah, so this is Mr. Race. How do you do? Yeah, I was wondering if you could spare a couple of moments. Yes, yes, of course. I'm sure Mr. Race can look after the bank for a little while. Can't you, Mr. Race? Uh, of course he can. Uh, Mr. Race is uh, very capable. Uh, would you like to come through? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You're doing your sardine impression again. Who's that? Ball. Personnel. Took over from Ricketts. Mm. Straight into the small office. Here we go again. Why don't you just take the coffee in? Then you can be sure of what's going on. Oh, no, I don't want Mr. Ball to think that I'm the sort of assistant manager who rushes around trying to get into people's good books. Ned, you'd only have to take one look at you to realise what sort of a person you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you here, Mr. Ball? Are you really happy here, Mrs. Braithwaite? Sorry? Well, let me put it another way. Do you want to stay in this town as the manager of this branch? Uh, do I have an alternative? Well, that depends on you. You've had enough messing about from this bank and its previous offices. So you're offering me a choice? Yes, we are. Your coffee. Ah, oh, good morning. There you are. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Ricketts. Yes, your proposal was perfectly clear. I hope my response was just as clear. I'll ring you tomorrow, yes. Goodbye. Mr. Rex. Uh, yes? I want you to do me a favour. Uh, gladly, gladly. Uh, Mrs. Braithwaite's going to be busy this evening, so I'd be pleased if you'd uh, take over her social duties. Now, this means that your wife may probably need to be involved. I assume that won't be a problem. <laughs> Fine, then, fine. Uh, you can charge anything you spend to the bank, of course. Good. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, then. Uh, fine. Bye-bye, Mr. Moore. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, Ned, <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a few things to do, so I'm going to leave you in charge of the bank. Um, enjoy yourself tonight, won't you? Bye. <laughs> what am I going to do? It's this tells bridge night. You just have to take the bull by the horns and tell Estelle to cancel a bridge night. That would be very like taking the bull by the horns. I'd end up squashed against the wall. What are you going to do? Well, I haven't decided yet. I might kill myself. <laughs> or alternatively, I might just burst into tears. I mean, where am I going to take them? I don't suppose you've got any suggestions, have you? I'll be your wife if you like. <laughs> Estelle finds out. Tell her you're having a trial divorce. <laughs> Where's Belinda? Uh, nipped off early. Oh, sugar. <laughs> so? All right. Oh, well, um, what will I do about a wedding ring? I'm not going to buy you a wedding ring. <laughs> it's all right, I can wait. This is a race. It's got a nice ring to it, hasn't it? Sounds more like a bell tolling to me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh. I got the shopping. Ah, ah, uh, good, right. And, uh... I wanted to apologise. What for? Well, I behaved like a prize prat earlier. <laughs> I, uh, of course I'll do the cooking. I, I, uh, I didn't have a business meeting. I was just... You were just exerting your independence. Exactly. I'm sorry. Mm. Ah. Now, how many people are we cooking for? Uh, well, there's, there's nobody coming, actually. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, there was a change of plan. Uh, Ned's going to deal with them. You're kidding. I've just spent 50 quid on grub. Well, what about Louise? Maybe she could use it for her catering business. I didn't even say the return, you know. Uh. You want a drink? Yes, thanks. How was your day? Um, I wanted to talk to you about that. Oh. Louise, I've got a present for you. Lovely. What about you? How was your oh, day? Bitter. Really? Mm. Hey, well, Louise, your present. This is meat? Yes. Why are you giving me meat as a present? Oh, well, the butcher had run out of sapphires and diamonds. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> I like meat. Bye, Louise. <laughs> Poor Louise. Now, I am prepared to take over red responsibility just for this evening. What, you mean you will do the cooking? Absolutely. Oh. Mm. I got time for a quick bath. Yes. Oh, and um, put on your 
heart to heart outfit, will you, Belle? <laughs> you know, God has found a new and very irritating way of plaguing the life out of me. Boils. <laughs> no. Locusts. No. I give up. Well, it's a combination plague, actually. It's it's a community charge combined with bloody mindedness. Well, we're lucky. We gain. We don't lose. Oh, I'm not talking as a householder. I am talking as a bank manager. Some people who shall remain nameless have taken to paying their annual bills with about 300 separate checks or for different amounts. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's beginning to make life as a bank manager very interesting. You're not finding it as enchanting as you used to. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. So, what did the Lord High Barrington of Ricketts want? Oh, yes. Did you hit him? Well, <clears throat> I was going to, Belle, but um, <laughs> something he said made me change my mind. He must have said something very powerful to stop you pounding him into a pulp, which is what you said you were going to do the next time you saw him. I was. I, I admitted I was. But, you know, um, pulp is very difficult to get out of the office carpet, Belle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yield to your superior household knowledge. Mm. So what did he say? Well, you offered me a job, actually. Which you, of course, immediately turned down. I see. Well, it is a very good job, Belle. There's no such thing as a good job working for that toad. I agree. What? I wouldn't actually be working for him. He's a management consultant now, and um, he headhunted me. Are you serious? And I've got till tomorrow to make up my mind. What's the job? Well, it's running a new housing association. They buy land and buildings and rebuild and renovate where necessary. And it would be about twice the salary that I'd get if I stayed here. You cannot go to work for Barrington Ricketts. Well, I'm glad you said that. What? That's exactly what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to stay at the small business bureau where I think there is a job that needs to be done. And anyway, I rather like working next to you. Want another drink? Uh, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Ball came to see me today. Mr. Ball from personnel? Oh, yeah. Uh, he said that he thought that the bank had messed me about quite enough and that the least they could do was offer me a better job with better money. Well, that's perfect. Well, it's not that perfect, actually. Why? What do you mean? Well, it might mean a move. Oh, don't be such a downer, Bell. I don't mind travelling if it's a better job and more money. Really? Sure. Okay. So, what have they offered you? Well, it's a, it's a new project um, for, for 1992 for our uh, entry into Europe. That sounds interesting. Oh, it doesn't mean a move to head office London, does it? Of course not. Hmm, good. So, where did they want you to go? Brussels. <laughs> Brussels. So what will you do, buy a boat or wait till they finish the Channel Tunnel? <laughs> Next week at 8 o'clock, we have a box office hit for Bank Holiday Monday. Eddie Murphy stars as the...